Welcome back to another exciting episode of Level Up with Sean Myers, the podcast where we bring you inspiring stories and insights from individuals who are making a significant impact in their fields and communities. I'm your host, Sean Myers, and today we have a truly remarkable guest with us. She's an entrepreneur, a business owner, CPA, certified tax planner, devoted mom, loving wife, and a true pillar of our community. Her expertise in financial planning and her commitment to giving back have not only helped countless individuals and businesses thrive, but have also made her an indispensable force in our community. I'm honored to introduce you to the one and only Sarah Jones. Sarah Jones, welcome to the Level Up with Sean Myers podcast. How are you doing? I'm great, Sean. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Cannot complain. Like I told you earlier before the call, I already ran my seven miles this morning, did my cold plunge at 46 degrees. How about you? You're making me look bad, Sean. You're making me look bad. I did not do seven miles and I did not do a cold plunge, but I did. I was productive and I'm really excited to be here. (laughs) Fantastic. Well, I appreciate your time, energy, and effort. And I appreciate you being here today. So we have listeners, entrepreneurs, self-employed, business folks. So I have been excited. I've been sharing with my friends, my family, and my wife that Sarah Jones, the one and only, is coming on the podcast. So I'm excited to be here. Thank you for being here. Let's get cranked up. Awesome. Okay. So for our listeners listening, they're typically on a treadmill, in a car, walking, maybe in a sauna, cold plunge. So tell them a little bit about Sarah Jones. So just a quick little plug, you know, you have your billboard. When I think of Sarah Jones, I'm like, this lady is a superwoman, right? She's got it all together. She's an entrepreneur. She's a businesswoman. She's a wife. She's a mom. She's a community. I mean, she gives back to her community. She is goddess. Like you inspire me. And I'm not just saying that you inspire me. But today, right today, we're going to peel back the layers. We're going to dive deep on the Sarah Jones, on what goes on behind the scenes, because when people see the billboards, when they see the success, it can be intimidating. Right. And it can paralyze us. So won't you tell us a little bit about yourself? And like start from from when you were young and like through childhood. Okay, well, I'm Sarah Jones. I'm from here. So I grew up off County Line Road in Willis for the people that are local here. Um, Went to Willis High School. Um, I had a great, great family, a great upbringing. I have a wonderful family. Um, The one thing that we did not have, well, I'll tell you the one thing we had a lot of, we had a lot of love. I mean, I, I, I get choked up. I had an amazing family. I cannot tell you I learned how to work hard. My dad's probably the hardest worker I've ever, ever seen. Um, and we had love. We were faith-based and God was a big part of our family. And so I have a great upbringing. The one thing that really, I guess, shaped me kind of from an early age is we did not have a lot of money. Like my dad worked really hard. My mom stayed home. We we're very, very low middle class. And some things just coming into life. And this, sometimes when I tell this story, I'm like, this is so silly, but it's not. It had the hugest impact on me. I wanted to be a cheerleader, okay? It was like my life goal when I was 14 to try out to be a cheerleader in high school. So back then you couldn't cheer like in junior high. You could only do it in high school. So we didn't have money to do it. If I remember right, I think like just for the the uniforms and the camps, it was like four or $500, which like now is a lot of money. Back then it was a ton of money. So we lived off County Line Road and there was a little nursery that's no longer there called j and Nursery. It was a plant nursery. And I got a job there when I was 14. And I shovel mulch, watered plants, like dug up potatoes in the summer. And I walked, it was like literally right there by my house. So I worked there to pay to put myself. And of course, I didn't even know if I was going to make cheerleader. Well, through that process, I I think that I realized that one, I'm really stubborn. (laughs) Two, if you work hard enough for anything, no matter what it is, I always tell people you can't do everything, but if you focus on something, if you can do it, I had no training, I had no coach. I literally did stuff in the backyard. I made cheerleader. I actually made head cheerleader because I worked so hard. But that had a really big impact on me at a really young age that anything you want to do, even if people think it's crazy, you can do it and you can achieve it. Going from there, I graduated. I actually got married super young. I met a boy from Conroe and I got married when I was 18 and he was in the Marine Corps and I lived in Hawaii for two years and my oldest daughter was actually born there. And then we were at Quantico for two years. We unfortunately um, got a divorce and came back to Texas. 
And I put myself through school as a single mom and I drank a lot of coffee. That's where I got the, the little wrinkles that I have is from all that hard work. But I got an MBA in finance, a master's in finance, a master's in accounting. I got a certificate in financial management from Cornell. Finally ventured out um, in May of 2018. I actually quit my last full-time job and said, I looked at my husband, Phil, and said, I want to do this. I want to actually try to have my own business. So that's when I quit. It was a lot of hard work. We don't have enough time to talk about the struggles of that because that was like a whole, I'll, I'll dig into it, but saying I could talk for hours about that, of all the struggles there. Let's stay there for a second. So leading up to you making the decision going, hey, I'm throwing in the towel or I'm quitting. What made you like at that point in time, what do you, what went through your mind going from, hey, I'm working for this this company to transition into what now you do, right? CPA, the CPA business. I will tell you what really happened. So one, I feel like I've always wanted to have my own business, always. I've always had a huge fear-based mentality from that because I've, it's something I've never done. I came from a background. So I worked for the state. I worked for a municipality where you were not paid well, but you had a pension and security. And especially when I was coming from, a, I was a single mom, it kind of paralyzed me. It's like, oh, this would be really great to do, but I better not try that. I mean, this is my safe place. Looking back, Sean, that was the biggest bunch of bullshit. I don't cuss a lot, but sometimes you need it. And it was such bull crap. It was such a, a, a mind trap that I played on myself because I was giving away 40, 50 hours a week for something that I wasn't even, I felt like giving value. So, so really the head of it is my last position. I won't share where it was because it's a local municipality that I really truly value this, this organization. My direct boss just happened to be an awful leader. So and leadership is hard, but she with me, it was, it was awful. But I remember coming home to Phil and saying, like, I want to, what was, sorry, not to interrupt you. What was awful about the leadership? What was awful about it? Um, she threw papers. She was very, very, she was brand new in her role as of, as I was too. We both came in at the same time. Um, yeah. she couldn't communicate. And I remember she threw papers at me one day because something yeah. wasn't done. That wasn't even something that I was supposed to be doing. And I was just like, man, this is some bull crap. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't know how to react. But yeah. it really wasn't that, that was like the point of it. I didn't feel like I was adding value and serving the way that I could. And yeah. I'll never forget what Phil told me. I said like, what, can I try this? And he said, Sarah, like worst case scenario, let's say that you try this and you really suck at it. I mean, you've got all these degrees. Worst case scenario is you just go get another job. And it clicked to me that it's like, okay, this is the worst case scenario. And that gave me, because I had so much fear about jumping out because I'd never done that, that gave me enough like, I mean, it can't be that bad. So yeah. that like gave me enough security to jump out and do it. And um, from that forward, I was a one woman show. I did everything, started getting clients, really loved it because I was adding value, but literally ran myself in the ground health-wise, relationship-wise. So not, not to interrupt you, you're fast forward. And so I'm going to slow down a little bit. So leading up to that struggles, what struggles did you face? So you had your childhood, your dad was a hard worker. You'd work for the municipality. You, you learned, you know, like, Hey, I'm a hard worker. I put in the work. I'm not seeing the reciprocation on value, everything that I'm putting in. I'm right. learning what to do, what not to do as far as leadership goes. So what, what other, what struggles have you faced? So you've always put in the work behind the scenes. It sounds like. What struggles and how have you overcome those struggles from the early childhood up until you're like, you know what, I'm meant to do my own thing? So I feel like one, I, I always had a really good sense of knowing that I could do anything. And I don't know no. where that was instilled. I think literally, even though that's such a small, tiny story that when I learned at 14, something so impossible in my mind is being able to be a cheerleader because I wasn't in the right group. I didn't have the right look. I was kind of like an overweight, chunky little kid and I did it and I rocked it. Um, I remember specifically when I went to, to tryouts, people were kind of like, what's Sarah doing here? And they saw me like start doing stuff and they're like, wait, we don't want Sarah here because I was good because I worked my ass off. That's right. Always tell people I'm not the smartest. I'm, you know, not the best. I'm not the talented. I will outwork anybody. I think that that's has always propelled me, but at the same time, going into the struggles has also created imbalance, which I know we've talked about. Yeah, I would say that. Another thing too, like 
I've learned probably in the last five or 10 years, kind of as I've gotten older, so I'm 41. Like when I was younger, I just tended to care more about what people thought. Um, Mm, And I feel like, especially as a business owner, especially in your local community, you have to get over that because you won't put yourself out there the way that you need to, to be authentic, to serve your clients and your community. If you always have that thing in the back of your mind, for sure. So that was something really big I had to get over. That was definitely a struggle. Yeah. Would you say that's like more like kind of like an ego, right? Kind of like an ego thing. Oh yeah. Well, and really like from, I think, and I don't know if men share in the same, I think this might be more of a woman thing, but you know, thinking in my mind, who is this Sarah? Who does she think she is that she can do that? And just having people almost like laugh at your efforts because you're putting everything out there, the stuff that fails, the stuff that succeeds, but you have to have the, you have to do that or you won't, you won't go anywhere. So I kind of had to get over that and realize people might laugh at me. I don't care. What are they doing? They're, they're not putting themselves out there. It's almost like an imposter syndrome slash self-doubt, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. And we all have that. I, I struggle with that every single day. Yeah. Right. But I think it's that action, it's that progress like you've done. You put the work behind the scenes, which created self-worth and confidence. And, and, and clearly that shows up today, right? In Absolutely. Yeah. So awesome. So fast forwarding, where have you fallen off the track? So you're putting one foot in front of the other. You're working on, you don't know this at the time, but you're 14. You're doing these things. You're like, man, okay, as long as I put in hard work behind the scenes, doesn't really matter what, it, what anybody else thinks about me. I know I'm going to get to where I want to go as long as I keep doing this, this, and this because you're seeing results along the way, where have you fallen off the tracks in, in any area of life? Fast forwarding, like you're like, okay, I'm going to open up that business. Where did you fall off the track? And then how'd you get back on it? And I'm smiling because I, you know, I've, I'll i share with the, the audience, like Sean is my coach. Like we've been through this. Like he has helped me tremendously. And I feel like you already know what I'm going to say. I am like, I do really good. I, I What I do really well in is if I have one thing, I can laser focus, but everything outside of that falters. So you already know my answer. It has been by far and large my health in different times of my life. And like specifically when I started my business in 2018, I gained an embarrassing, embarrassing amount of weight. And I know that it sounds like almost insanity, but this is really how it feels. It's almost like I put my head down for a few years and I built this business from the ground up. And then I got up and I was like, where did this big butt come from? I mean, it's like crazy. Like, because I, before I went, I did CrossFit every morning. I jogged every night. Everything was in balance. Um, I felt like, but then I had this one encompassing laser goal and I really struggle with making everything work. I do really good when I can do one thing but it's at the sacrifice and the detriment to everything else. And that's something you've really, really helped to bring some balance into my life for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Now, as far as the journey from, and you touched on it earlier. So you said, you know what? I've worked here. I saw what I, I saw the value that I can provide the marketplace. What does that journey look like from, Hey, starting your business in 2018, 2019, right? Or 2018. Yeah. So what it so you're like, okay, I'm gonna go out on my loan own. So you ended up getting your CPA, your certified tax planner. So take us, take us back there from that decision from you know what? I know the value I have to offer the marketplace. I'm gonna go open up my own thing. You took that leap of faith. I did. And when I took the leap of faith, I was not uh, certified yet. I was not a CPA. So I'm a CPA, I'm an EA with the IRS in all 50 states and that tax planning. Um, I was nothing, but I had, I was really good at what I did and I had a heart for clients. So when I first started, I was just a bookkeeper and you, I did do some tax as well, but I really focused on businesses that needed clean bookkeeping. And that's what I started with. And I grew that to a level that was the hardest, like most gut wrenching thing I've ever done. But what I loved about it is even in those trenches, like I could come to, you know, if I came to you, Sean, and did that for you, I could immediately see how I brought value and brought um, clarity to you. And it was amazing. And I loved it. So I started there. I'm sorry. What did you say was gut wrenching about it? Just taking that leap. And I mean, when you have a 40 hour job or week job, you show up and you sit at your desk and you do X and you go home. I mean, it was all up to me. Like I've, I'd I'd never, ever, I'd always work for somebody else. So just to say my success or my failure is completely up to me. 
Yeah. That like got me up in the morning. That made like my, my juices flow like that. It was, um, it was frightening and it was very inspiring at the same time, if that makes sense. I mean, a lot of people listening to this are like, oh, it's because she's never done this. I've done this my whole life. For somebody like me, that's very conservative, that always had a very conservative job to go from that it was very, very difficult to me. For sure. Did you have a support system like as far as a husband and did you already have reserves in the bank, like a kind of a cushion to make sure that you're, you know, financially support? So one, I have the most amazing support system. My husband is great. We've been married 12 years. He's amazing. Shout out to Phil if you listen to this. <laughs> Phil is amazing. But no, we did not have reserves. You know, we had, we were probably very similar middle class. We, you know, we've got four kids, our youngest. At this point, so little Phil was born in 2015, so he was three. And uh, we had one thing about my job when I left, it's you have to give, you know, 90 day notice. They have to bring somebody in. Everything takes so much lo longer when you work for a, a state or a local entity. So kind of my thing was, I'm going to do this and I got to go get enough business to stir up to make it work. And it just did. It On paper, it didn't make sense. But no, I did not have, I feel like, and they always say this, like if you... The people that are successful, they like end up getting fired somewhere or whatever because it forces them to jump out. Most people don't jump out. I kind of said, okay, I'm putting in my 90 day notice. I just have to make this work because I'm sick of living this. I want to go add value. I want to do this myself. So yeah, love that. And what in that first 12 months? So, right, what does that journey take our audience through the journey of, okay, all eyes on you, right? Like you're going out there, putting the time, energy, and effort, the sweat equity, the blood, you're in the trenches, you're making things happen, right? You didn't have it all figured out. You weren't perfect at it. Did you have a mentor? Did you have somebody to help guide you? Did you have a coach in that time? And how did you transition from sole operator, right? Just Sarah Jones to a thriving business with 10 plus people now yeah. in, in your business? That first year or two was brutal. There was a ton of mistakes. I always say like, I've got enough mistakes of what not to do. And that's kind of what helped me be successful. A lot of embarrassing failures, a lot of pivots for sure. Um, I really didn't have a mentor per se. I've had a lot since then. The One of the first things that I did is there is a CPA um, out of um, Florida actually, and his name's Andrew Argue, and he's like a student of Grant Cardone, and he has a mastermind for accountants. So it's like the nerdiest mastermind that you could ever imagine. Um, <laughs> I went through his, it's called Six Figure Firms of how to like start and then, you know, build up. And then I went through a year mastermind. Once I got to that level, I didn't even have money to pay for it. Like I don't even, it's like I took this leap of faith, which makes no sense for somebody like me. But I signed up. I'm like, look, we're just going to make this work. And I did a year long mastermind that I remember I paid $30,000 for. And it literally showed you how to go from a six figure firm to a seven figure firm, showed you everything from mindset, which was a huge part of it, how to build your, your clients, how to build your services, how to, to do engagements correctly, blah, 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 all this stuff. And it worked. So I started in May of 18 and our firm hit seven figures in 2020. So in a year and a half, I scaled from that to seven figures. So what I'm hearing you say is that when you started off by yourself, you plugged yourself into this group and spent $30,000. Let's stay on that for a second. So me, myself, and I know a lot of our listeners, a lot of audience, right? Business owners, entrepreneurs, $30,000 is a lot of money. It's a How did you... Yeah. And, and you and you even shared it yourself. You were conservative, you know. So did you? What what were some? Did you even look at it as? Oh, this is thirty thousand dollars, or how can I how can I overcome that and set up something worth financing or whatever it may be? Because right. normally that would stop a lot of people in their tracks. Oh, absolutely, and it did to me because like everybody told me, this is amazing. You have to do it, and I saw the price tag. I'm like, are you crazy? Like they're they're not I'd like, but they made it once I did like the intro call and went through the stuff. I'm like, I absolutely need this. And what they did is they allowed you, if, if you didn't pay 30 grand at once, cause I didn't have 30 grand. You right. paid it monthly over the months yeah. that you were in it. And I'm in their whole thing, which was a great ploy, but it, it worked and it was true. You're yeah. going to make more revenue immediately that will pay for this and it will help propel your business. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to go with it. And I did it. And it was one of the greatest things I ever did. I'm, I'm no longer in that group. It was a great group. The, the one thing about it that he always kind of got onto me, it was very salesy. And I yeah. never really think that a relationship with your CPA should not be salesy. 
So everything was amazing, but I never really drank the juice on the sales stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I got a ton of value on it. And then I, I went my, my way after my year. Awesome. So pivoting from sole operator, you plugged yourself into this group. You learned a lot. You were soaking it all in trial and error, failure after failure. You're in the trenches at what year, because you've exploded, right? You've been thriving. I've been following your journey at what point in building this business, your CPA firm, did it, did it really start to exponentially and start compounding? So honestly, and I say this knowing that like it sounds like it salesy, it's honestly when I, every time that I've taken the step to increase our staff for future growth, the growth came, if that makes sense. It's almost like because I didn't have the staff in place, the opportunities didn't come. And I understand that that doesn't sound tangible because I'm CPA, I'm a number driven girl, but that's exactly how it started. So we, of course, when I started, it was just me. So we're now a team of 11. And probably the biggest and most pivotal was when I got our um, financial controller, who is Andrea Gray, who is absolutely amazing. So we all have cute little tags uh, on our doors and hers literally says Andrea Gray runs the show. So it doesn't say financial controller. She literally runs the show. When we brought her on full time, which I think she started full time, I have to remember, I want to say it's probably been three years. So she worked part time for me before. But when we made that jump, which was scary for both of us, our business started catapulting right now. I mean, we organically market, we get calls for clients daily and it's just like, man, I don't know what we're doing, but it's working because we get so many clients. And it's like I said, it's almost like we built the team. And then, you know, the field of dreams, if you build it, they'll come. It's almost yep. like I had the team and I, I, I made that financial commitment for the growth to serve our clients as well as we could. And then we just got so many clients. And like last tax season, we literally had a game. How many new clients are we going to get today? I think last tax season, our highest number of new clients, we got 30 new tax clients in one day. It's just, it's exploding. Incredible. And so there is a book, it's called The E-Myth. Have you ever read it? I have, yes. It's been a long time ago. So you have the technician, you have the manager, and you have the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Where would you feel like percentage-wise you are? So just for those that are listening, the technician is the one basically doing the work, right? You're, you're doing, you're answering the phone calls, you're sending the emails, you're taking the tax appointments, you're doing the work, you're having to show up. Any business that you start, you've got to start off, right? Typically ground level as a technician and wear these different hats. Then you've got the manager, which is, okay, now you're transitioning. You've replaced yourself as it's from the technician to the manager. Now you're managing the systems and processes in that person or people. And then you transition into the entrepreneur, right? So the goal, like my goal is to be hundred percent entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and that's not everybody's goal. Everybody's different. It, what, do you resonate with that? Do you, from the technician to the manager, to the entrepreneur? Cause I mean, you've done that just in a short period of time. Yeah. So our business is split up a, a little diff. We have different segments. So we have our stuff is build, protect, grow. We help you build your dreams, protect your assets, grow your legacy. So build is all of our bookkeeping and CFO. When I started, I was the technician. Then it grew to being the manager when we brought Andrea on. Now, I love that segment, but I'm truly the entrepreneur. I'm not involved in any way, shape, or form. We have an amazing team and processes, and everybody loves that, but I'm out of that completely, um, which is great because if and when I do you know, communicate with those clients, I'm bringing in really high-level tax strategy. They have an amazing team to do the other stuff. Now, on the tax side, so that's on our protect segment, I'm in the phase where I am still doing some technical work because we have a lot of clients that we they are high net worth. Uh, maybe they have some estates and trusts and things like that. I still do some of our highest level stuff, but we are bringing in and we have two tax managers now. And I have, actually, we have three because we have Paul. He's part-time. Who Paul, if, if you guys come in, you have to meet Paul. He's been through 250 tax audits, had his own practice. He's an amazing wealth of knowledge. He's my dad's age and he he thinks our office is a little crazy because we're a little, <laughs> a little loud, um, but he is an amazing, amazing guy. So I do have those in place. So right now I'm in the trenches building that team up so that we can give the value and all of the great success to all of our clients so that, but yes, the goal, I would say probably my goal is within one more tax season, maybe two for me to be high level manager slash entrepreneur, because if I can be the face and if I can do digital products and create value and content for all of our clients 
And if I can have really good staff to actually make sure it gets done, it, it's a win-win for everybody. So before we shift gears, I want to ask you this question. What's one piece of advice that you would give a starting entrepreneur, starting business owner, somebody self-employed that's looking to transition from out of their nine to five, they're working, they had the kind of the same struggle that you did, the same obstacle, you know, they're not the leadership, the boss isn't where they want to be. They're not, they, they feel like their value that they're providing is not being reciprocated. They're not seeing the benefits of that. What's one piece of advice that you would give them to take that leap of faith, to be, to get, un, you know, unstuck and actually take action? I would say exactly what resonated with me, that this right now, what you're in could be your worst case scenario. That gave me such comfort to know, oh, well, this kind of is the worst case scenario because your skill set and the experience and everything that you have now, if you tried to do something by yourself and if you sucked, which you're not going to suck, but in, if you did, you could just go back to what you're doing now. That gave me a lot of uh, comfort. There's a quote. It's uh, by Mon Montaigne. It says, a man who fears suffering is already suffering from what he fears. Right. Preach, John. Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. Fantastic. So transitioning, shifting gears a little bit. So you're thriving, right? For the last three or four years, you've just had your head down. You've been hiring. You're thriving. You're being a mom, superwoman. You're being a pillar in the community. You're doing big things and you're not looking back. Right. And you're taking the people with you, your employees, your friends, your family. Absolutely. And it's just an honor to be to get to know you. I know we've kind of known about each other over the years, but it's just been an honor to get to know you. So as we wrap up this call, after these three or four years, what slowed you down enough to want to reach out? Because you had mentioned it earlier about the health, you, you struggling in, in some of these other areas of life, you know, more so health. Mm -hmm. At what point, what went through your mind? Hey, you know what? I'm doing great in this area of life and I'm killing it and I'm crushing it, but I, but not so much. I'm, this is this, I'm not mindful. I'm not aware. I'm not intentional about this area of life. I need to do something about it. So what, what made you take action? Yeah. So I'll be honest. Like, and we have, we've known, I think we're friends on Facebook. We've been friends on Facebook for a couple of years. We live in the same neighborhood. Um, your wife has been involved with our church, like often on different times. Um, so I knew of you, but you would come on like I would see, you know, posts that you would put for your insurance company and they were so hilarious. Like I remember one specifically, I think y'all are doing pushups in your front yard or something. And I, I think that we're called to be different. We're called to stand out And your vision and how you do things really resonates with me of how I would do things because it's goofy. It has nothing to do with insurance, but yep. that's what makes it so genius. So yep. I've seen different things that you did. And then I saw that you. So I've seen that. I've seen your growth, which has been amazing to see and how you're involved in the community and what you and your wife do. And I love it. But then I started seeing that you were doing coaching and all this stuff. And I'm like, huh. And then, of course, you know, you're scrolling on Facebook and I'm like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. I mean, I've shared with you like we I've had so honored that I've had such amazing business growth. But the one thing that always has come back, you know, like when you, you do your goals every year, I would put the same damn goal every year for 20 years. Get yep. back down to 130 pounds. Like that's literally been since I haven't weighed 130 pounds, which has been like when I was 19, that's been my goal to get back down there. And I've, it's always been a struggle to do that because if I only had to do health, if like I could, that could be my job. Oh yeah, I'd kill it. But not exactly. when everything else is going on. So you were posting all this stuff about leveling up and balance and making sure that everything's firing on all cylinders, not just, and I was like, I need to reach out to this guy. So I did, and we've worked together for a little bit now, and I'm so excited to continue working with you. But one thing that you really helped me do is really look at my priorities because you said, okay, Sarah, like you say that health is your priority. Show me in your weekly schedule where that's a priority. And I'm like, damn, he's right. I know. <laughs> because that to me, when I'm busy and when things are going on, that's what gets put on the, the back burner because I have to drive the business forward. So you've helped me a lot in that area, and I still have so much to grow. Um, but I'll tell you, that's been my goal since forever. And I think when we start working together, I think I've lost about 15 pounds since I've started working with you. Just in an instill. Let's back. go. Give me a fist pump. Come on now. So I'm 14 pounds for my goal weight. I'm, I weigh 144. And that's the that's the tiniest I've been in a long time. But you really helped me to show or to see 
my goal, the only thing in the way of my goal is me. And, and am I actually going to put in the time? Um, and, the, the, and that's a huge struggle for me because I do have so much going on, but everybody does. It's not just me. I mean, I'm not some, you know, anomaly. It's, it's everybody's struggle. Yeah. Well, and the beautiful thing about it is like, there's three pillars of health, right? Or there's three pillars in my opinion that are most important. It's, it's sleep, nutrition, and exercise. And if you can get those three things down, you're unstoppable. You're already unstoppable, but you get these three things down, your health down, man, watch out, right? Wow. Oh. So awesome. Sarah, it has been a freaking pleasure having you on the Level Up with Sean Myers podcast. Likewise. Thank you so much. Um, where can our audience, our listeners, and uh, support you? Where can they follow you? Absolutely. So if you, oh, okay. So like social media stuff. So on Facebook, we're Sarah Jones CPA. You can find us there. We just started. So like give us some grace. So we're not like huge social media yet. Like we just started a TikTok and an Instagram and we're, we're diving into YouTube. So like my, my kids are like, oh, mom, you're like rad now. But we're doing that. Um, our website, though, is sarahjonescpa.com. We have a lot about our mission and values, and you can learn about our team. You can start there. Of course, we're for those that are you know local here, we are right off of 45 in Conroe. You can stop by our office and... and you are taking new clients on. We are. We're taking on new clients, and we do everything from if you're a business owner and you need a, a like basically a fractional CFO or you need clean bookkeeping, what we do a lot of, what I'm probably most organically referred to, out for is yeah. man, Sarah helped me with tax. My bill was this, and now it's this. She restructured me by far is, is our tax planning. So if you feel like you're overpaying in tax, I do a complimentary analysis and just say, Hey, this is how you're set up. I think you should actually change and do this. Sometimes it involves attorneys, sometimes it doesn't. And then here's the tangible savings, and you're one, and you can kind of see how that goes long term. So we do that, a lot of that and a lot of just good tax. I always say one, one disclaimer that I would say. If you're, especially like younger people that are getting tax tips and stuff off Instagram, there's kind of a little bit of a dark side of our industry. You mm -hmm. need to make sure you're working with the CPA, not a firm that uses a, no, they need to be a licensed CPA. That's kind of like going to a doctor that's not a, a licensed medical doctor. There's, you need to work with the CPA. Then you need to make sure that CPA is a good CPA and does tax planning for you. And how do they know, how does, how does one know if, if they're certified, if they're a certified tax planner and, and a CPA, is there a way to look that up? Or there is. is. That... So yes. So each CPA is governed by the state. So you can go to the Board of State Accounting for Texas and look up a license. But when you go to a, an accountant, you know, or a CPA, most of them have their degrees on the wall. In the state of Texas, for example, you cannot say that you're an accountant without having a CPA. So if you're meeting with somebody, they should clearly tell you what their credentials are. And then you should also get backup of those credentials, especially before investing money and time and, you know, having them come in. It means your finances. That's that's a big deal for sure. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Sarah Jones, thank you so much for your time, energy and effort. It has been a honor, absolute pleasure to have you on our show today. I know you've impacted thousands of lives, people that are going to be listening to this for many years to come. And so thank you so much. Absolutely. And I really enjoy working with you, Sean. Um, your coaching has been great. Anybody listening, Sean's amazing. If you need coach, if you want clarity like this, like if you were like me and you're a gung-ho, heads down, if you're a workhorse, but find that you can't make everything successful, he's, he's an amazing, amazing coach in that area. Well, it's like shock that system in the plunge, right? Like sometimes yeah. you got... <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, and uh, have a wonderful day. Awesome. You too, Sean. Wow. What an incredible conversation with Sarah Jones today. Her journey from becoming a certified tax planner to entrepreneurship while balancing the roles of a dedicated mom and wife is nothing short of inspiring. Sarah's dedication to her community and her ability to provide financial guidance is a true testament to her passion and expertise. If you've enjoyed today's episode and want to stay updated with Sarah's work and future endeavors, make sure to follow her on Facebook and check out her website. We'll also provide links in the show notes to connect with her. And as always, thank you for tuning in to the Level Up with Sean Myers. If you found value in today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave me a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to me and helps me continue bringing you fantastic guests and inspiring stories. 
Until next time, keep leveling up and remember, the journey to success is all about the steps you take to get there. So keep climbing those stairs and we'll see you on the next episode.